Hello and welcome to Droix. Another retro present episode for you today where we take a look at a retro console and games then explore more modern ways of playing them if you do not have one. In this episode we are checking out the Sega Dreamcast. I did not actually own one of these when they first released back in 1998. I had a PlayStation and I was waiting for the PlayStation 2 release in the following year. I picked this one up several years ago, retro bright in the case and controlled it a little and then installed some mods on it. Tech specs are boring so I have put them on screen instead of going over everything. The Dreamcast was designed to use mainly off the shelf parts which reduced the cost of the console. Compared to say the PS1 and PS2 with their custom chips, the Dreamcast was a fair bit lower in price than them both. Notable features of the Dreamcast were the ability to output to VGA which provided higher quality visuals up to 480p. The normal AV cables would output to 480i or in some cases 240p, which looks fine on a CRT display but not so great on higher definition displays. As a note, we are running this Dreamcast via VGA through an OSSC upscaler which outputs to 1080p via HDMI. And let's not forget the VMU, which is part memory card, part PDA and part minigame unit. It interacts with various games to provide information or rewards during the game. Or you can disconnect it and play minigames that are downloaded to it. For example, on Sonic Adventures 1 and 2 there are various simple minigames and the ability to connect to other VMU for battles against others. It was also the first console to include a modular built-in modem for internet access and online gaming. No console would be complete without games. With Sega being a games publisher, it meant there would be some great first party titles from their catalogue. Around the same time as the Dreamcast, the Sega made Naomi arcade board was released. It used similar technology to the Dreamcast and it meant many popular arcade games were easy to port over. Titles include the arcade hits Marvel vs Capcom, Crazy Taxi and House of the Dead, which also included the light gun accessory. There's too many to list, but other standout games include Quake 3 Arena, which had online compatibility with PC gamers, Samba de Amigo with maracas to shape the music to, and Sega Base Fishing, complete with fishing rod accessory. Then there's classics such as Dead or Alive, Sonic Adventure, Ikaruga, Jet Set Radio, and Soul Calibur. And of course, Shemu. Personally, I never enjoyed the Shemu series, but each to their own. The Sega Dreamcast was unfortunately short-lived, with it being officially discontinued just a few years later in 2001. But 21 years on, the Dreamcast is still going strong, with games in development and being released. And the modding community have made some excellent products including replacement power supplies, HDMI output kits, and even optical drive emulators which let you run games from SD cards. Picking up a Sega Dreamcast today is fairly cheap. They can go for as little as £50 with a controller, generally a little higher if you're not patient. Games, due to the ease of privacy on a console, are thankfully fairly cheap. You can pick up bundles of games either with the console or separate from as little as £20-£30 if you don't mind broken or missing CD cases. The high quality condition or rarer titles and accessories can however go for far higher prices. I have matched up the Dreamcast with the RG552 Dual Boot OS handheld. There are other handhelds that can run Dreamcast, but you might find compatibility or performance issues on them. If you want no assholes, then the RG552 is a great choice. If you missed our full RG552 review, you can find it linked in the description or at the end of the video. It supports AAA Android games as well as emulating all the greatest consoles from Atari up to PSP. We recommend using Android OS for the Dreamcast emulation as it performs far better than on the Linux version. The emulator we are using is the free version of ReDream which is pre-installed. The free version is fully featured, but upgrading to premium unlocks more save slots per game and higher resolution rendering. 
it's not really needed for the RG552, but if you want to support development of the emulator, it only costs around £5. It also covers, say, the PC version if you wanted to use that as well. The vast majority of games are compatible with the emulator, with only 40 of the 900 plus titles having some kind of issue. In terms of performance, I tried a number of games and they all run very well at 60fps. Some may have occasional dips whilst accessing data from the disk image. It's nothing that will affect gameplay though. There are built-in options to change the video resolution as well as the aspect ratio from 4.3 to 16.9. If you go into the menu whilst playing a game and look in the cheats menu, you can enable a hack to make the game display native widescreen. Not all games support this correctly though. Another useful feature are the save states, which allows you to save the current game position and resume exactly where you left off at a later date. It's very handy for when travelling and you quickly need to save and shut down for example. And you're not left out of the big TV gaming as the RG552 has a mini HDMI port for connecting to your TV or monitor. You can change the output resolution in the settings, but be aware that higher resolutions may affect the performance. It is simple plug and play, no having to mess around with setting up. The RG552 is just right for the Dreamcast. It has a large display, which is perfect for the Dreamcast's quality visuals. Whether or not you stretch it to widescreen is up to you. The controls are perfect, with plenty of buttons available to match the original controller. Although sadly, you can't play House of the Dead with a light gun. You can still play it with the controller though. With the Redream emulator, you can explore and enjoy the vast majority of Dreamcast titles which are very well supported on the RG552. If you are looking for an handheld that is capable of playing the Dreamcast amongst other classic and more modern consoles, computers and handhelds, then the RG552 is a definite handheld to consider. That wraps up this episode of Retro Present. We hope you have enjoyed it. You can learn more about the RG552 on our website at joyx.net. Use the discount code on screen to get 5% off when checking out. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and we hope to see you back in our next video.